I'm Dr. Angela McBurdy of drflute.com and today's video is about professional flute extras. Do you need them? So I am partnering with the Flute Center of New York who sent me a couple flutes that have some of these options which I'll get into in a minute and I will be able to show you what they look like and discuss what they do for you or what they might not do for you. If you're interested in any of these flutes and you're interested in purchasing a flute for yourself and exploring some of these options, let me recommend the Flute Center of New York, which is flutecenter.com. They have a fantastic inventory that they will be able to send you. And when you're looking for these options, they will probably have that in stock and can send it to you so you can try them out for yourself. And if you do go to Flute Center, use my code, Dr. Flute, and that will give you a couple perks. One of those perks is that you will get a 10-day flute trial instead of a 7-day flute trial, and you'll get free shipping on the instruments that you get sent to you. So those are all wonderful things uh, that can help you make the right decision for you. Now, let's get talking about options. Options or extras are exactly what I'm uh, am going to be talking about here. They are uh, elements that can be added, keys that can be added to your instrument. Now, this is my own instrument here, and I do not have really any extras added. For the most part, I've lived my entire flute professional life with no options, and I don't feel the lesser for it. But, but, uh, as I have tried out some of these instruments that have these options, I can really see why you would want some of these added to your flute. Now, let me just warn you that most of the time, any extra that you add to your flute is going to add extra weight. I feel the difference between this flute and my flute in weight. And if weight is an issue for you, you want to think very carefully and make sure you're trying out these instruments before you decide to purchase. Uh, because if you have any kind of wrist problems or hand problems, the extra weight might not be worth the added value that some of these options or extras can give you. So I want to tell you to be very careful about that if weight is an issue. And also that trying a flute for 10 days might really determine whether that extra weight will cause you problems. The first option I would like to talk about today is called the split E mechanism. Now the split E mechanism I think is really uh, should be called a split G. It's around the G key. It's not near our E key. I consider um, my second finger the E finger. So when I'm telling my students put your E finger down they put the second finger down here. But it's called the split E mechanism because it helps your high E. Now a high E is very, so we're talking about third octave E, so the one, two, one, two version, is unstable and it cracks. It's a note that will be easily cracked and since I've never had a split E, I've worked hard at knowing where to put my airstream for that note to, to minimize the potential for cracks and for it to be unstable. This split E mechanism would take the, what well, here it is, the split E mechanism here would take that fear away and give me much more stability when I'm using that high E. Um, now, if you can see, I used to think a split E mechanism, and I see the lever there that, oh, I, I have to somehow squeeze my finger there. It doesn't, it. it's going to be an automatic uh, movement here. You don't do anything extra for it. But when you are playing a G, a G key puts down, let me show you on my flute, okay? So here's just a regular flute. If I press my G key down, it's going to put this key down, all right? That's your normal. If I play a high E, here's one, two, one, two. I put down these two keys uh, for my high E and it puts down this extra key. Now let's show you the difference. So here's my G. I'm still just putting down this key here. When I put the high E fingers down, 
you can see that now instead of just this key, it also puts down that key. And that is what's going to give you that stability. Does it change the tone? No. It doesn't change anything except that uh, the fear of it cracking um, is taken away. So let me do that on mine. And I can feel when I do that, just this element of it wanting to pop down and not being right there. Do you, I don't know if you can pick up on that. I can make it stay there, but when I play it here, it, it really comes out easier. It's right there and I have no fear. So if I play, it, it feels very, very clear to me and easy, really easy. Here's my flute. It comes out fine and for you, you might not hear a difference. I feel the difference. I feel the difference in there. So that is a split E mechanism. Is it necessary? Absolutely not. It adds extra weight. So that might be a downside, but uh, it can really help uh, because we play high E's a lot. It's not like it's a high C sharp in the third octave that we may or may not play very much. Um, that high E is played a lot. And so it can really help stabilize that sound. Option number two is the C sharp trill. Now we all have this lever here, which this one right here, and that lever gives us a B flat, right? So it's where when we use our trill um, B to B flat to B or A sharp to B, when we have to uh, move chromatically, we use that key. Now all of our flutes have that key there. So it's this one on top that is the extra. All right, so now I have two here. That key is going to help you with trills. That's its main function. It's called the C-sharp trill. When you are trilling from a B to a C-sharp, we have to move both your thumb and your first finger, and they have to move back and forth. All right, you learn to do it. We've all learned to do those two fingers, and we make it work. But if I finger a B and I use that key instead, so, so much easier. That key makes that a beautiful trill. There's also another one. I think that um, there are other uh, trills that can be used for this, but here's the two main ones. The other one is if you're going from a G to an A flat in the third octave. So I would finger my G here and then A flat, so my thumb is off, I have to put down the A flat key and lift up my first one. So it's an awkward position. Now I can use this key to do it, but this one also will work for that. And I think um, from the one that I would use, because I don't have a C sharp trill, so I would be using my first trill key down here, uh, that the C sharp trill is a brighter sound, makes it uh, a nicer sound. The other one is just a little bit uh, covered, I think, for that trill key. All right. Now, again, the downside to that is this weight. So that key right there adds this key here. So if I press it down, you can see it moving. And what that means is that there are more bars, more wires, more key work, and it it does add weight. Um, for me, I'm not positive that I would want that extra weight uh, for both of these. Now this has both of those options on there. And so both of them are going to add that extra weight. I can tell the difference between these two flutes, my flute that has no extras and this flute that has a couple extras. There is a weight difference. So for me, I'm not positive that I would, I would want to play with around with it for those 10 days to decide whether I thought that that extra weight was not going to cause me any problems. Uh, another extra, it's not an extra, it's a difference, but it's this offset G. 
So offset G takes a G key, which in my flute, my G key is right in line. That's the one I've always played uh, ever since I was in, in high school. And um, they didn't make professional flutes with offset Gs at that time. So I learned to play with it in line and I probably wouldn't change that right now. I'm not gonna mess with a good thing. Um, I'm going to keep my G in line. But I think for the health of your hand, today's philosophy is the offset G is the better way to go because it doesn't make your hand be quite, your wrist to have quite such a severe push inward. Um, and so it makes it easier for you to press that key down without having as much of a severe um, right angle that you need with an inline G. That's not gonna add any extra weight. That's just uh, an option. But if you had really large hands, maybe inline would be the better way to go. That it just gives you that little bit of extra space for your hands. So that's something to think about. Uh, I have this professional flute here with offset G. I have mine with inline G, and then I have another flute here that has inline G. So you can get them either way. Let's talk about another option. And this is the D sharp roller. When we have to do pinky work here. So when our pinky is doing this kind of work where it's moving back and forth between an E flat or a, at a C sharp or uh, an E flat, C or B. It's a lot of work for our pinky and it's hard to make it move smoothly between these, okay? Now, um, I would say on a lot of intermediate flutes, that is a bigger issue because it's not as refined moving your pinky around on those keys. Uh, you can do it and you can make it work, but because they are factory made, that movement isn't quite as refined. On professional flutes, the makers of these flutes try to make that movement minimize between all those keys. But there is this innovation called a D-sharp roller right here. Um, I don't have an example, but there can be two rollers, one on the D sharp and one on the C sharp key. So that if you had to roll from this E flat or C D sharp over to C sharp, there would not only would be this roller here, but there'd be a roller on the very edge of your C sharp key that would then help you to move. Is that necessary? Maybe. Um, I don't feel like that adds any extra weight, but if I were doing does it help? I think so. I think that that does help me get down to that key. Now, if I compare that to my flute that does not have a roller, Frankly, I find that just as easy on, on my flute. Uh, I think it has to do with how these are made, um, whether that helps you or not. I don't see any drawback for having that. And it might really help you compared to what you're using right now. But is it necessary? No, absolutely not necessary. I, I don't find there's really a whole lot of benefit to that. Uh, but if your flute that you're looking at has it, more power to you. It's probably in the long run gonna be a nice little addition that doesn't really add any extra weight to your flute. If you notice between those two flutes that I just played, another option, which I've talked about in another video, but I will mention it here, is the wall of the flute. So I just played my flute, which is a standard wall, which means it's 0 0.0016. And I com compared that with this heavy wall. Which is 0 0.018. Um, so I don't want to get into that in a huge way, but there are different thicknesses. Now, this uh, first flute, so the heavy wall was a Miramatsu, this is a thin walled um, or light walled, I think is what they call, and that's 0 
And you can hear that it is a brighter sound. That is the 0.014 Haynes flute. Here's my flute, which is a Haynes as well, but this is 0.016. And then the heavy wall, which is 0 0.018 Muramatsu. So you can hear the flute darken up in sound as we go from the thin walled to the standard wall to the heavy walled. Uh, so the, those are definitely options. The 0 0.014 is less common. Standard, if you're not uh, checking into the flute that you're getting, it's probably a standard wall. And maybe when you, ha if you have a lot of air, you play with a lot of air, you might want to go with a 0 0.018 because there will be more resistance to help hold that air and focus it into a beautiful sound. All right, so that's another option. Let's just mention one or two other things, and that is um, head joint options. A standard head joint that you get with your regular intermediate flute, unless you ask differently. Uh, and with your professional flute, you'll get a silver flute with a silver lip plate and a silver riser. Head joints can be in different metals and today they do experiment with more than just silver and gold. They have aramite and other terms which I can't even go into right now but there's different metals because uh, they're experimenting and perhaps a different metal can give you the sound you're looking for too. It's all about preference. But one of the options that you can't see, I mean, we can all see if someone plays with a gold lip plate. I used to ha play with a gold lip plate and then I wanted a, a little bit different sound and I went with this head joint, which has a gold riser. Now the riser is what attaches the lip plate to the head joint. And that can be different uh, carats, nine carats, 16 carat, 24 carat. It could be platinum or it could be just silver. The more, the higher the level of gold going to platinum is more resistance. So more resistance darkens up the sound, but for me, I feel like it gives it a, a bigger sound. I think my favorite right now, if I could buy a head joint, I'd probably buy a head joint with a platinum riser to it because I think that for me gives me, focuses my tone in the direction that I want it to go. Um, that isn't going to add really, I think, any noticeable weight if you have more gold on the riser attaching the lip plate in, or even if you had a gold or platinum lip plate. Uh, but you will hear it in the sound. It's going to, the more gold, the darker the sound, the more resistant, um, and can give you a real edge that maybe you want to have. Another extra or option that is offered on flutes are tone holes, whether they're drawn or whether they're soldered. Now, I've lived long enough that I've seen them sort of be a, f I hate to say the word fad, but um, sort of a fad because I remember way back when I was in high school or maybe early college and um, talking about soldered tone holes and they were moving into drawn tone holes and drawn tone holes were the biggest, best things since sliced bread. That that's what every professional flute had. And then somewhere along the way, I lost track of that and came back into thinking about, you know, a new flute. And so I got into what uh, are, is being offered today and found that drawn, no, soldered tone holes are in. Those are the ones that um, people are asking for and they think are sometimes are the better way to go. Well, let's just talk about those. So a drawn tone hole means that they have, the, the makers of the flute have taken the metal and drawn the tone hole up from the uh, body of the instrument and that is your key. Okay, so then this sets on top of that. A soldered keyhole, uh, soldered tone holes are soldered. They're made separate 
put on top of the hole that is in this tube and then soldered on. Now, they give you a little bit different sound. A soldered tone hole is going to be a little bit darker. A drawn tone hole is not going to offer quite as much resistance and it'll lighten up your tone a little bit. I, you know, maybe a tiny bit extra weight in a soldered flute as opposed to uh, the drawn tone holes, but I don't think, I think that would be negligible. Um, and uh, the um, sound difference is really preference. I don't think that it's better or worse. I think that it is a preference. So uh, if you have a flute that you're looking at that has a soldered tone holes and you think, oh, I've got to have, you know, the drawn tone holes because I, well, uh, I don't think it's going to be that big and huge of a difference that it's going to make or break the instrument that you want. If you're looking at one and you love it and it has one or the other of the tone holes, um, you probably like it either way. So don't worry about that so much. But if you say, I really want a lot of resistance, I want the heavy wall 0 0.018 uh, and I want a gold lip plate or a gold riser and I want those soldered tone holes because I need that resistance. I'm a big player. I have a lot of sound and that's the sound that appeals to me. Great. It's preference. Um, so I would not get too caught up with um, soldered and drawn, um, but know the flute that you're, you're buying. Know the one that you're looking into and say, when you're going for your flute trial, I'd like, a, I'd like the soldered tone hole flutes. So only send me soldered uh, because I want that edgier sound. I want a little bit darker of a sound. Okay, those are flute extras that can be added uh, to your professional model flute. And um, when you are looking at a flute, go to Flute Center of New York and um, ask them about these different options. Uh, if weight is no problem, then try the split E and the C sharp drill. And um, you know that they're gonna help you in the long run for various things. It's nice to have that E stable. If you want more resistance, go for a standard or a heavy walled and add some gold to your, uh, your instrument. There are a few other things like pinless mechanisms and Y key arms and stuff like that. But uh, I think the ones that I've covered here are the main ones that you're going to come across when you're looking at descriptions of flutes. And don't be afraid to get your flute trial and to ask for some of these because you'd like to see what does that do for you. Uh, and enjoy. The main thing is to enjoy your flute trial. Enjoy the flutes that you are looking at uh, because they're, it's like Christmas. It's just a fun time. And even if you um, try four flutes and you're sending three back and you're going to keep one of them, well, it was fun to try all of them. And of course, we would all like to own all of them, but you know, it's generally not possible. So enjoy those flute trials. Enjoy trying all these options. And let's get to the bottom line. Uh, are they necessary? Well, no, they're not necessary. I'd say no. I've never had a split E. I've never had a C sharp trill. Uh, I've only ever had standard wall. I haven't had a D sharp roller. Um, I think mine are, my tone holes are soldered. I'd have to look that up. I don't remember. It was 22 years ago that I bought that flute. Uh, I've, pretty much always played with a gold riser. So that's probably the only extra uh, on my flute, but I felt like that was the tone that I wanted. Um, and so none of them are necessary. Nothing is. But do they add value to you as a flutist to put them on? Probably. They can make some things easier. It'd be nice to have a really uh, stable high E sometime um, instead of working with it. But you know, I've worked with it for the last 22 years and so I can make my high E stable. It's not really a problem, but I wouldn't have to work so hard if I had that split E mechanism. So they're not necessary. None of them are. And they do add money 
to the flute. So if you want these extra things, you're adding a couple hundred here and a couple hundred there, and that can raise the price of your flute. But uh, if you're interested, try them because you might really like the benefit that they give you. All right, that is today's video. Have fun with your flute trial and trying out some of these flute extras on your professional flute.